This is part two of the question, what the heck is a spirit? We're trying to understand that. In the last video, we talked about uh, man being made in the image of God, three in one, just like God is three in one. That's what the image of God means, is that we're, we, our being, our ontology, has the same pattern that God's ontology does. Obviously, God is vastly greater than us. We are finite. He is infinite. We are created. He is uncreated, so on and so forth. But nonetheless, we are made in the image of God. We are three in one, body, soul, spirit, just like God is three in one, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We understand that the spirit in a man is his mind, and the soul of a man is the fruit of that spirit, which is the experiences, memories, that uh, a man has experienced the soul is alive just like the spirit is alive and the, and we learn from Hebrews chapter 4 that those two are bound very very tightly together and we can disentangle them using the word of God which is exactly what we did so now continuing on asking this question so keeping in mind the things that I just said I have a list here of several things I'm just I'm just going to kind of run through them very quickly spirits are transcendent Rational, creative, and authoritative. Spirits are created. Obviously, the Spirit of God would be an exception to that, but every other spirit, every other being is created. Spirit is the spark of life. It's the source of life. If you, if you have a test tube with a cell, right? so it's got all the chemicals needed for a cell because it's a living cell, you poke the cell, so that all the chemicals are still in there, but it just kind of comes apart. This scientists with their stunning knowledge, so-called stunning knowledge, and their, their stunning methodologies, and their stunning, fabulously sophisticated equipment, they can't put Humpty Dumpty back together again. Spirit is the spark of life, not the scientific method, okay? That's why scientists cannot put the cell back together again. Uh, spirits are personal and powerful. And so uh, this is the an easy way of understanding what a spirit is, is to just think about yourself. Because you have a spirit. As we talked about in the previous video, your, your spirit is the spark of life. Your spirit came from the breath of God. Your spirit informs your soul. Your spirit gives you transcendence and rationality over your physical surroundings. You have a spirit inside of you. You are self-aware. You can act with volition and will and deliberation. You are rational. You are able to communicate with language. You have a mind. You're able to interact with other beings, language or otherwise, right? And so think about, I don't have the scripture right in front of me, but remember that Jesus is, is walking on water and the people are, actually, I think I'm mixing that up. Jesus ap appears to them and they think that they saw a spirit. And he says, a spirit doesn't have body. Touch me because I'm flesh and blood. The spirit doesn't have a body, right? And so think about yourself, and that should be easy because you are yourself all day, every day, right? And so think about yourself in the way that you do things, in the way that you plan things, in the way that you interact with other people, except think about yourself without a body. And so you're disembodied. So you're still aware, you're still, you still have memories and knowledge and understanding about things. It's just that you can't think, oh, I'm going to grab that and stick your arm out and grab it. Or I'm going to put one foot in front of the other and I'm going to walk from one place to another. You can't do that because you don't have your physical body, but you're still there and you're still aware. So we're used to being able to have a kind of power over our environment because of our physical body. Our body is physical and therefore it interacts with other physical things around us in a way that is decently predictable and reliable. And so we're used to that. Well, 
spirits do exactly the same thing except that they do it without a body. They're still able to interact with including physical things. They're able to interact with other spirits. They're able to have motives and agendas. God has given them a kind of power that we are not used to because we are not used to the application of supernatural power. We're used to the application of natural power, like a bulldozer or dynamite or picking up a pencil in our hand, something like that. They use a supernatural power to do basically exactly the same things. And a lot of times spirit spirit because spirit is the source of everything, it is always more powerful and it is always superior to um to flesh and blood and to mere physical processes, okay? And so anything that they do, assuming that they have authority from the Holy Spirit or authority from God in order to be able to do it, anything that they would do is always going to be more effective and more powerful. Not by might or power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord, right? Uh, there's a verse, I think, in Isaiah where God is kind of mocking people who are depending upon physical things and say, you just have horses. You don't have spirits. Like like spirits, you were talking about something powerful. But the horse is just like, you know, clomping around or whatever. Like even though a horse seems powerful to us, a spirit is how much more powerful than a horse, okay? So now let's consider... And so, so um, we're going to get into this in the next video, the four types of rational spirits. So God, the human spirit, we're in a body. The Bible talks about, I meant to include this, but the Bible talks about the body as a vessel. Okay. And so the, the physical body is a vessel. And obviously, what do you do with a vessel? You put something in it. And so the idea that... God wants to put the Holy Spirit inside of our body as a vessel. And we also obviously have our human spirit. Demons want to possess bodies. I'm sure we'll talk about that at some point, why they want to do that. Demons want to possess bodies. And so they they want to get in on the vessel action too, which is very interesting. So like the, the body is a vessel, a container, as it were, a fleshy container. It's kind of funny. That holds stuff and it is able to do, you know, do a certain amount of things. Um, the next way of thinking about spirits is typologies. And so the Bible is full of types of things. Abraham is a type of the father and his son Isaac is a type of the son. And you remember the story where Abraham is getting ready to sacrifice Isaac, but then there's a substitutionary sacrifice which takes his place. Obviously, that wasn't the experience of Christ, but nonetheless, it is illustrative of uh, a father and a son. And so it's like a, a symbol. It's an illustration, okay? And so we're given multiple illustrations, and this is specifically of the Holy Spirit, but I believe that these... Um, are also representative of other spirits too in various ways. Um, Jesus said, rivers of living water will flow from my heart. Uh, you remember on Pentecost, uh, the place was filled with a rushing wind and then also tongues of fire. And there's many other examples and you can look in the chapter on typologies of the Holy Spirit and see um, the example. And so part of the background of this typologies is think about John chapter one. In the beginning, the word was with God. The word was God. And then verse 14, the word became flesh and tabernacled among us. Normally, whenever we write a book about the world, the world already existed. And then we write a book and we're simply describing what it is that we see. The Bible is not like that because the word of God, in the beginning, the word was with God and the word was God. The word existed before anything else existed. And so whenever everything was created, it was created in conformity to that pre-existent word. And so the natural things, processes, we got the picture of a, a seed, the seed dies, a, a tree comes from it or a fruit comes from it or a, a plant comes from it. It bears fruit. 
it bears seed bearing fruit and then the seeds that you end up with have been multiplied compared to the one seed that died so one seed dies it multiplies through a process and then you get a whole bunch of seeds right so we get this this multiplication a kingdom right there's a king there's people who make up a kingdom they have an army they have a type of government on and on and on a relationship between a father a, chi- a child and his father illustrative of our relationship with our father god you see what i'm saying god created the world in such a way that it teaches us spiritual truths if we you know obviously believe that god is and he's a rewarder of those who seek him and these topologies are exactly the same way and so whenever we look at water think about water being like refreshing and so like you're on a hot day and you're like man i would really like a bottle of water right now and so you drink a bottle of water and it like it cools you and it refreshes you and it like cleanses you okay think about wind and so if you're in I don't know if you've ever been in a situation where there's like super strong winds and the winds are blowing and that that physical wind is blowing against your body and it's like really hard to stand up and you're like it's like taking a huge amount of energy and you're like moving and if the wind is fast enough you're just you can't even stand up you're just like moving in the wind it's blowing you along right it's an external force that is acting upon you in the same way and I've actually felt this, like the wind of the spirit, like there's no, there's nothing happening as far as I can tell externally, but on the inside, it feels like there's a wind that's blowing through me and it's completely external to anything that I'm doing. It's just a, an internal force that is acting upon me and I feel it in the same way that you would feel wind. Um, in the same way, like w- remember, um, Jesus is talking about the wind blowing where it will in John chapter three, um, his visitation with Nicodemus. Um, and he's saying that the Holy Spirit is like that. Think about wind. Normally you can't see it, right? And so you don't know where it's going. You can feel it. You know, what exists, but you don't know where it's going. Like Unless if there's a specialized circumstance that exists, such as smoke or something else in the wind, so that you can actually see that the the force is actually creating some kind of an action, and you can actually kind of visualize the wind, as it were. Um, In the same way, normally spirits are invisible, and that's kind of disconcerting to us because that's a huge way that we understand the, the way that reality works is that we see things in front of us and we know that if we see it, it's there. And if we don't, you know, seeing is believing, right? It's how people say something like that. Um, well, the Bible teaches us set your sights on the unseen, actually. And so normally spirits are invisible unless if there's specialized circumstances that permit us to see them there's a there's a a passage in um, the old testament where elisha the man of god is with his servant and the in, the whole city is surrounded by enemy forces and then the servant starts freaking out and the man of god says lord open up his eyes for they that are with us are greater than with them and so i'm paraphrasing and so god actually blesses him he gives him a special dispensation he opens up the eyes of the servant and the servant is able to see all these chariots of fire the chariot charioteers of israel around them and so there's spiritual forces angels holy angels that were there even though the servant of god couldn't see them initially because God hadn't given him the eyes to be able to see them there, even though they were there. And of course, they were there for a reason. Like they weren't there just like, oh, let's just like blow in the wind or let's just like, you know, stand around and look around. Like they were obviously there because God was doing something and he was he was going to use them to affect a particular outcome. And they weren't there just to take up space, even, you know, how many angels can dance on the head of a pin like they don't actually take up space 
not in the way that we th- think of. And so, um, but they were there for a purpose and they, they weren't there for no purpose. Okay. Uh, fire, our God is a devouring fire, right? Fire consumes, it shines light, it purifies. Uh, I felt the burning of the Holy Spirit in me. And actually, whenever I re- first received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, like this, like burning, I actually thought I had indigestion. It's kind of funny. Um, and particularly whenever I was going to church and I, d- I didn't know, I didn't know what was going on, but it's like the fire of the Holy Spirit was there and spirits are like fire. Remember Jesus said, I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. And so there's, there's a relationship of spirits to fire. And so we put all these things together and we get two kinds of very general things about the way to describe spirits. A spirit is a source of power and ultimately God is the ultimate spirit. And so he is the ultimate source of power. And so if there is ever any power anywhere, including from the devil, ultimately it comes from God. Because if, it, if something didn't come from God and it wasn't his will, it couldn't possibly remotely, 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 remotely exist. Okay, He sustains every single thing. It's called a CAT. His being and his command sustains everything. And if he didn't command it to be sustained and literally sustain it from his being, then it just wouldn't exist. And so if God stops sustaining the devil, the devil just whoop, gone. Like he was never even there. Whoop, gone. If God stopped sustaining the coronavirus, whoop, gone. Nope, nope, doesn't even exist. Doesn't affect anything because it doesn't exist anymore. If God stops sustaining me, my atoms just whoop, disintegrate like they were never even there. He sustains every single thing that happens. Uh, okay, so power and information. And so this this is this is my the best way that I can simply describe what a spirit is is that a spirit and so f- for example there's all different kinds of spirits and we're used to calling particularly unclean spirits, demonic spirits by name, spirit of infirmity produces sickness, a spirit of deception, lying spirit produces deceitful speech, uh, a seducing spirit like allures and entices and makes you like, oh, like a, like almost like the, the spirit of the used car salesman or something like you just like, oh, and you just can't think clearly. Um, and so spirits have a certain power based on what kind of spirit that they are. And they also have access to a certain source of information, right? And so they are invisible to us, but they are not invisible to each other. And they know what's going on in the spiritual realm, even though we don't. Our access to understanding what's happening in the spiritual realm is because if, if it is true that we have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is our guide. And right, because he's very God of very God, there's nobody who's deceiving him, right? And because God is not a man that he should lie, he's not deceiving us. He's revealing to us what it is that he wants us to know. And so we actually are, even though the spiritual realm is mostly invisible to us, we have the very best guide that anybody could possibly have because God knows everything and he's in control of everything, okay? If we depended upon some other spirit, a lesser spirit, whether it be angel or demon, we just simply wouldn't get the same quality of information and that we shouldn't we should not remotely have the same confidence in the kind of power and information that we do from the living God because it's just a, it's a lesser spirit. And um, there are other spirits that outrank that spirit. By definition, God outranks all of them, right? And so what if they're under, you know, they're being manipulated? But of course, we wouldn't know that because all, we're just interacting with the one spirit. You see what I'm saying? And so it is very good news for us that our guide, our spirit guide, as it were, is the Holy Spirit of the living God and not some lesser spirit. So, power and information according to the kind of spirit that it is. But again, the simplest way of understanding a spirit is you understand yourself. 
you have self-awareness, you have rationality, you have a motive and an agenda, something that you want to accomplish, somewhere you want to go, something you want to do. Spirits are exactly like that. They are persons that interact with other persons. It's just that they don't have a body like you and I do. And so that makes them a little bit different than us in our understanding.